Greetings to all. In our continuing series on the largest companies by market capitalization, we will today have a first look at ITC Limited. ITC Limited was founded in 1910 and is a diversified conglomerate with operations in hotels, paper boards and packaging, agribusiness, information technology, and fast moving consumer goods, including foods, personal care, cigarettes and cigars, branded apparel education and stationery products, incense sticks, and safety matches. Imperial Tobacco Company of India Limited served as the company's legal name when it was founded on August 24, 1910. The name of the company was changed to India Tobacco Company Limited in 1970 and subsequently to ITC Limited in 1974 as the ownership of the company gradually became Indian. The full stops in the company's name were eliminated with effect from September 18, 2001 in acknowledgement of the ITC's multi-business portfolio, which includes a wide range of businesses. The company had small beginnings. The company's operations were centered in a rented office on Radha Bazaar Lane in Kolkata. On August 24, 1926, the company celebrated its 16th birthday by paying Rs. 3,10,000 for the land parcel at 37 Chorangi, Kolkata, today known as JL Nehru Road. The company's choice was historic in a number of respects. It was to serve as the start of a protracted and exciting trip into India's future. Two years later, the company's headquarters building, known as Virginia House, was constructed on that site and went on to become one of Kolkata's most recognizable monuments. Tobacco is the main destination for ITC. This makes sense. One out of every four Indian adults, according to 2017 GATS poll, smokes every day. The monopoly giant has a big market to capture. As a result, although requiring only a tenth of the total capital used in the industry, ITC's tobacco division generates over half of the company's revenues and accounts for an astonishing 85% of its profits. It is believed that tobacco is a sin product. They can't outright promote it. The way they want to package, it won't be possible. People will hold them responsible for their family cigarette addiction. Since then, the company has relied on its cash cow, the cigarette industry, to fund its diversification efforts and to lose its bad boy reputation in order to become a every household product. ITC seems to be making an effort to cut back on smoking. In the middle of the 2000s, ITC aggressively entered the FMCG market, challenging some of the established players who had been around well before the 20th century. ITC faced competition from Hindustan Unilever Limited and PNG for personal care products, Britannia and Parley for biscuits and Nestle for instant noodles. The Tobacco Institute of India, a representative body of growers, manufacturers, exporters and ancillaries of the cigarette components of the tobacco business in India, counts ITC among its key members. Despite the restriction on cigarette ads in India, ITC has come under fire for utilizing direct and indirect advertisements to market their tobacco goods. These were some of the criticisms, for example, illegal use of billboards and posters to advertise cigarettes that glorify smoking in order to appeal to youth and low socioeconomical groups, such as by associating particular cigarette brands with success, wealth and Western lifestyles, or by using brand-variant extensions. ITC's packaging and printing business was established in 1925 as a strategic backward integration for ITC's cigarette business. Even though the company's first six decades of existence was particularly focused on expansion and consolidation of the cigarettes and leaf tobacco industries, today it is India's most modern packing facility. ITC promoted ITC Badrachalam Paper Boards Limited in 1979 in order to enter the paperboard industry. With effect from March 13, 2002, Badrachalan Paperboards merged with their company and was renamed the Badrachalan Paperboard Division. The company's Tribeni Tissues Division and the division combined in November 2002 to establish the Paperboards and Speciality Papers Division. The technology, output, quality and production methods used in ITC's paper boards are on par with the best in the world. Additionally, it has significantly aided in the development of Sarapaka, a region of Andhra Pradesh that is economically underdeveloped. 
It actively contributes to community growth, environmental preservation and education. Near Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu, BILT Industrial Packaging Co. Limited's paperboard production facility was purchased by ITC in 2004. ITC can enhance customer service because of the Kova unit's shorter lead times and larger selection of products. ITC bought Tribeni Tissues Limited, a manufacturer of specialty papers and a significant tissue paper supplier to the cigarette industry in 1990. The resulting company was given the name Tribeni Tissues Division, TTD. In November 2002, TTD and Bandrachalam Paper Boards Division amalgamated to create the Paper Boards and Specialty Paper Division in order to take advantage of strategic and operational synergies. In 2002, ITC introduced a line of high-end notebooks under the Papercraft name. In order to broaden its selection and appeal to more students, the Classmate line of notebooks was introduced in 2003. Over the years, Classmate has developed into India's top notebook brand and expanded its product line to take up more space in school bags. Under the Classmate brand, practical books, drawing books, geometry boxes, pens and pencils were introduced between 2007 and 2009. In the market for luxury office supplies and executive stationery, Papercraft has a wide selection to choose from. ITC has rapidly increased its footprint in the FMCG sector especially its younger businesses, to keep up with the FMCG industry's explosive growth in India. Branded packaged food, personal care items, lifestyle merchandise, educational materials, stationary products, safety matches and incense sticks are just a few of its diverse offers. ITC has built several powerful consumer brands in the Indian FMCG sector in a comparatively shorter amount of time. One of the food industries in India with the quickest growth is ITC's branded packaged food business. ITC's food portfolio includes commodities, spices, biscuits, snack foods, instant noodles, confectionery and ready-to-eat meals. This portfolio is supported by major investments in product research, innovation and production technology. This company's seven brands, Ashirwad, Sunfeast, Bingo, Kitchens of India, Minto, Candyman and Yippie are what makes it successful. The existing selection of culinary goods received several fresh and creative additions last year. The Sunfeast Dream Cream and Dark Fantasy Choco Fills ranges now include new variations. Tangles and Mad Angles Musty Chart is a unique offering from ITC in the snack food market. Additionally, ITC released Minto Ultra Mints under the Confections umbrella. The personal care products business, ITC's newest FMCG competitor, kept expanding at a remarkable rate. Body care, hair care, skin care and fragrances are all part of its product line under the Fiamma, Vivelle and Superior brands. Exclusively available through ITC's chain of lifestyle retailing stores, Wills Lifestyle is Essenza de Wills, a premium line of fragrances and bath and body care products. In the course of the year, the Personal Care Products Division strengthened its skincare division with the introduction of Vivelle Cell Renew, a trio of products that include body lotion, hand cream and moisturizer. In a few markets, the Fiamma Aqua Pulse deodorant was also released. But still, ITC's FMCG segment, which accounts for over a quarter of its revenues, 26%, and barely accounts for 2% of its profitability. In 1990, ITC established the Agribusiness Division to facilitate the export of agricultural products, utilizing its expertise in agricultural sourcing. The division is currently among India's top exporters. In 2000, soyabean farmers in Madhya Pradesh launched ITC's innovative and now well-known e Chopal project. It now covers more than 4 million farmers in 10 states. Additionally, the agri-services vertical has been concentrating on enhancing agricultural productivity while strengthening ties with the farming community through the Chopal Pradarshan Khet project. In order to more actively pursue new opportunities in this industry, ITC split off its information technology business in 2000 into a wholly owned subsidiary ITC Infotech India Limited. ITC Infotech has established itself as a key player in offshore outsourcing, offering outsourced IT solutions and services to leading global customers across key focus verticals like banking, financial services and insurance, consumer packaged goods, retail manufacturing, engineering services, media and entertainment, travel, hospitality, life sciences and transportation and logistics. 
With more than 100 locations across India, ITC Hotels is the second largest hotel chain there. On the other hand, luxury hotels are a seasonal sector that only serve a small number of wealthy people. The corporation must spend a sizable sum on different fixed costs, payroll and other maintenance expenses even while the hotel is closed because these expenses are necessary for such opulent businesses. With a staggering rupees 25000 crores in cash on its financial sheet, ITC is in an impossible situation. The business has wasted money even after paying out dividends that account for 85% of its earnings, example the hotel business. Part of the issue can also be attributed to ITC's ownership structure. There are numerous shares of this company's stock available on the market, no promoters and investor disputes. The organizational structure of ITC is particularly complex, which makes value identification difficult. Another company uses cash to boost revenue but generates less money than the first, like the rapid-moving consumer goods, while the third burns through a lot of cash for what seems to be no discernible purpose. One company produces a lot of money but is vulnerable to regulatory uncertainty, like the cigarettes and hotels. In the midterm, ITC Limited would invest $2 billion, which is about Rs. 15,000 crore, to grow capacity in FMCG, paper, packaging and agribusiness as well as upgrade technology. The company is building new plants for spices that will serve both international and domestic markets, a packaging facility in Gujarat due to high client demand, a nicotine derivative plant, as well as adding new lines and upgrading existing ones. The funds will also be used to meet demand, improve the organization's digital capabilities and invest in new growth vectors such as FMCG, sustainable packaging and others. ITC is aggressively looking for acquisitions across all of its sectors as well as in FMCG sector. ITC is counting on an asset-right strategy in the hotel market, which means focusing more on managing properties than investing in newer ones. The company presently handles 12 welcome hotels but expects to have approximately 20 by the end of the year, with 5 to 6 already signed and another 5 to 6 in the works. ITC will have 34 to 35 welcome hotels in the next 3 to 4 years. ITC is a multi-division conglomerate, so we may need to do multiple videos to cover its story in depth that it deserves. I hope you have enjoyed our first look at ITC. We will do many more videos to cover its evolution so far and its plans for the future. I would now request you to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Please do leave your comments and feedback here below. Thank you.